Hello and welcome to this session of Talking Tech, Women and Girls in ICT. My name is Hannah Butchko, and today I'm delighted to be discussing tech and tech careers with interviewee Shinzia Story, Head of Global Sustainability and Product Management at Hilti Group. Talking Tech is a series celebrating girls and women in tech. It's been recorded around the world between Girls in ICT Day 2020 and Girls in ICT Day 2022. Girls in ICT Day is an international day marked on the fourth Thursday of each April. The objective is to help create a global environment that encourages young women to consider studies and careers in the field of ICT. The Talking Tech series is brought to you by the ITU, UNICC, and the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. And it's supported by Equals, the Global Partnership for Gender Equality in the Digital Age. Shinzia, thanks so much for joining me today. And to kick things off, um, would you mind introducing yourself a little bit to our audience and talking about what your current job is all about? Sure, thank you, Anna. Happy to see you today. And thank you for the time and the attention. Yeah, so um, I will start by telling you a little bit of uh, how I end up here in, the, um, in this environment. Um, it started uh, when I was very little. And I think that as of many other people, uh, you know, it's starting with uh, uh, the passion of my father and the work of my father, actually, who was a civil engineer and a teacher in mathematics. And I don't know if it's genetic or he was just passionate about what he was doing. And he, he actually uh, transferred his passion to me. And uh, I pretty soon realized that I wanted to become an engineer as well. Um, because I really always enjoyed uh, uh, science, mathematics. Uh, um, I like logical things, right? So uh, when I got into university, was everything fine? And uh, I said, right, uh, I think my, my path is clear. And then uh, after I finished universities or in between my studies, I really needed to understand what um, was my future sort of. I really need to give, uh, to give it a direction. And was there when I was a little bit lost. Um, and uh, I simply seek for advice. Right. So as many, I think many, many people do. Um, and the advice back then was to secure a safe job. Right. And, uh, and then I said, all right, then I will, uh, I will finish my study in industrial engineer. Uh, although I was more uh, oriented for, for architecture and civil engineer, I said, no, you know, people are telling me there is a crisis there, don't do that. And, uh, you know, it was really much um, safety rather than following a purpose back then. And it's, uh, it's like this where that I finished my study in industrial engineering. Uh, uh, I actually ended up liking it very much. It was a, a mix between engineering and economics. Uh, it was a very, very nice mix for me, but it's also very broad. Uh, field. And uh, by chance, I landed in a um, multinational uh, company uh, who uh, gave me the first opportunity as um, to work as product manager. And there I started my career in product management. Uh, and it's been now 15 year, years, I am a product marketeer, um, working in uh, three different companies, three different countries, um, doing now uh, sustainability for for him in Liechtenstein. What about you, Hannah? How uh, how did you end up uh, in in technology? Well, I will say that my path has been much shorter than yours, um, but I think there is something to be said about kind of following what you're interested in and taking the opportunities in front of you because I have spent the past four years doing my bachelor's in commerce, which is a little bit different than the traditional path 
to a lot of technology jobs. A lot of people come from engineering and computer science background. And my university specifically is very oriented towards the traditional big four business routes, which is consulting, marketing, accounting, and finance. And so pretty naturally, I kind of assumed I would find myself in one of those roles, um, whether that was just through networking with others, um, going to events, that's the opportunities that were really presented to me. But in the third year of my degree, I had the opportunity to intern with SAP in their value advisory division. So doing kind of some pre-sales consulting work with their software. And that was kind of my first door opener to where business and technology can converge. And that opened my eyes to the fact that I wasn't confined to these four routes. There was really more opportunities out there for me. And that was really eye-opening. And since I had that experience, I've been much more active in looking for new opportunities in tech, really focusing on exploring and expanding my technical skills in the area. And although it's only been a year, I think I've learned so much and gained so much experience in technology. And it's made me super excited um, just to kind of launch my career in this space and learn from people like yourself. Um, and even with that kind of comes exploring other jobs and opportunities that are really out there. And I think that many people would be curious to understand what your job in tech is now and maybe what are some of the specific tasks that you do in your day-to-day sure. -day work. Absolutely, sure. So as you mentioned at the beginning, I'm now leading a team in uh, um, global sustainability product management. So what we do is uh, um, kind of a product management work, but for a topic and a very important topic, I, I, I would say, um, rather than a product, right? So um, our focus is uh, to enable our customers and partners in the construction industry to be um, more sustainable. And we uh, try to do that in two different ways. So really looking at all the different dimensions and aspects of sustainability. Um, first one is helping them tra transitioning from uh, linear buildings to circular buildings, right? And ultimately um, for them being able to reach the, the, the target of uh, uh, net zero emissions by 20, 2050 hopefully. Um, and the second one is also, um, so this is more looking at the environmental piece of sustainability, uh, but sustainability is not only that. There is also a, a, a people uh, dimension. So we would like also to take care and to educate them to be mindful of the well-being of the workers, as well as the, the people that are going to living in uh, the buildings. Uh, later on. Um, so actually we've identified in order to do these two things, we've identified four different areas of focus. Uh, one is I mentioned is sustainable buildings. Uh, and here uh, you uh, have the uh, dimension of uh, uh, green building, uh, uh, all the products that we uh, deliver to job sites and so on. Um, then we have uh, a second dimension is building safety or building resilience, um, user health and safety, and uh, circularity. So in more practical terms, um, my contribution is really to provide, first of all, uh, the necessary transparency on sustainability data of our products to our customers so that they can understand where they stand, for example, in terms of CO2 emission, uh, but on, not only. So there are other sustainability dimensions, for example, waste management, right? So uh, first of all, it's really uh, provide them this transparency, which is uh, very much uh, um, important. On the other hand, um, we collect from them their inputs on what is the sustainability for them? What are their targets? What do they have to achieve? So that we can uh, really take those requirements, 
consolidate them and uh, bringing them in the organization and give our development teams the right direction to um, improve our product in terms of sustainability um, and uh, really look into uh, innovations um, that will enable everybody to, uh, to be more sustainable. And finally, there is another uh, part of my job that I think is uh, also very much important and it's related to um, the education of internal and external people. Um, what we've seen is that many people talk about sustainability, uh, but not so many people uh, really understand what it is, especially when you have to apply it to your uh, um, area uh, of action, you know. Um, so one thing it's, and I think it's very much important is uh, uh, talk about uh, best practices, share um, findings, share innovation, uh, because only by talking about it, sharing experiences and sharing innovation and sharing ideas, then you can really accelerate this, this transition from, uh, uh, from linear to circular economy, which is very much needed, I think. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I, I heard the term and the idea of circularity just become so popular over the past few years. So it's so exciting to hear that you're putting so much work and effort into that realm as well. I'm really excited to see kind of where that piece in particular takes off. And it sounds like you are involved in a lot of, like you said, really not only big, but important tasks at the company. And a lot of this stuff is really and stuff I mean sustainability and how that emerges technology is really quite rewarding when you see it play out so mm -hmm. I'm curious if there's any um, one or two big accomplishments or things that you've done that you're proud of um, in this role and with some of these tasks so it's very difficult for me to find things where uh, I'm proud of because I'm very strict with myself. <laughs> uh, I'm very rigid sometimes. Uh, I put a, a lot of expectations on myself, but I, uh, I could actually find um, uh, a couple. One is uh, actually with Hilti. Um, uh, and uh, it was, um, it's related to my previous uh, uh, job as global product manager for a product in, in that case. Um, and uh, I won together with, uh, with the team, the Michael Hilt Innovation Prize. Very so, nice. yes, um, I'm very proud of it because uh, um, it's it actually embodied the, the my values and, and the values that I share with the company um, because I was able to, to achieve it just because of teamwork, a lot of teamwork. I think that a lot of accomplishments cannot be reached without people that are together with you, that uh, accompany you and you can share the way with. Um, so it was a very nice experience, teamwork experience. Um, courage, uh, because, you know, when you have to innovate, you have to be bold also in accepting failure sometimes. Many, uh, many times uh, along the project, we were not able to really reach our, uh, our results. Uh, we were not able to, uh, um, you know, overcome uh, issues. Uh, uh, but the key there was really believe in the idea and move on and find a solution, right? Um, and then the third one is commitment. So everybody was really committed to the project and uh, willing to, to, to make a, a success out of it. Um, so at the end, we're, we were able to launch this um, Thor controlled impact wrench. Uh, which is actually sustainable because it's, it's both safe and productive, right? So it, it was somehow also um, uh, linked to, to what I'm doing now. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of, of the job that, that, uh, that my company is, uh, uh, is promoting or the, the purpose that, that our company is promoting, that is innovate 
to build a better future, right? So that was that was really fantastic. And the second thing that I can think of, uh, and that maybe it's worthwhile to share with you, it's something that happened to me at the beginning of my career. So I was actually a young woman. Um, and it's, uh, it's really not linked directly with, with tech, but it has to do with the, let's say, um, uh, atmosphere or working environment you will find yourself and uh, when when we talk with women in tech is often talking about uh, you know ah uh, it's it's a man world right and I remember back then uh, I was sent to an engineering summit in the US so I was an Ita a young Italian lady fresh out of university Really, my English was not that great and uh, um, not a lot of experience. But anyways, you know, sometimes being a woman also has the, uh, the, the upside of it. And they said, OK, we want to invest on you. Um, and uh, they sent me out to this engineering summit. I think that uh, total three women among uh, 100 men, right? And uh, there were different breakout session working groups. Uh, and uh, and uh, I remember this guy coming coming to me and say, all right, Cinzia, then uh, in the plenum, you will uh, go on stage and uh, present our idea and what we discussed. And then I said, oh my God, oh my God, you know, um, uh, in front of all these this, uh, this men, you can imagine you feel insecure, you feel judged. Um, but I am proud of it because I was able to, um, to step up, to, uh, to take the challenge and, uh, and to, to show that, yes, we can do this, you know, um, even being a, a, a young woman. So it's not only woman, it was also being young. Um, and uh, I think that mm, I learned a very nice, uh, uh, learnings that is just be authentic you know if uh, if you if you be yourself be courage courageous uh be authentic and not really um thinking about the expectation of the people that are in front of you right and uh and it was a great uh great uh, great feeling back then i can imagine and that's so incredible that even being so new you were so excited and willing to kind of take that jump, get in front of that stage, be bold and courageous. And I can see that it's um, helped you in your development and served you very well kind of from that point Absolutely. forward. And I think that's such an incredible push and motivation for girls who might, they want to take that leap. They want to take that kind of bold step that they're not fully comfortable with just to reinforce that there is a fantastic light at the end of the tunnel if they do kind of take that risk so I'm really happy that you that you shared that story and kind of while we're focused specifically on what it's like being a woman in tech and some of the lessons you learned I was wondering if there's any other advice that you've kind of collected over from that over the course of your career I guess from that early point to where you are now that might benefit any of the listeners um, who are a little scared or unsure of what to expect or just more broadly? Yeah, you know, I think that building on what we've discussed just up until now, um, we have to remember that we are persons, first of all, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's not always everything about um, career, uh it's uh, for me my entire life was uh, always uh, to trying to find a balance between uh, 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 which professional i wanted to be but also which person i wanted to be and it was a continuous research and discovery of uh, um, who i am and by doing this uh, what i would like to do next Right, so really um, always trying to listen to myself and to, to reflect on myself uh, 
And, uh, and as I said before, don't um, uh, try to uh, meet expectations that you think people in front of you or people around you might have on you, but just be who you are. Be authentic, be who you are, because I really think that through authenticity, you can build trust. And through trust, you can also build relationships and outperforming teams. Um, another thing, as I mentioned before, is being brave. Don't be, uh, and this is, this is something I think that it's frequently said, um, but it's true. Uh, you have to learn it on yourself because it's easier to say it than, than do it, right? Uh, but don't be afraid of failure because at the end of the day, the biggest learnings, positive or negative, uh, um, are, are coming through, through failure. And then I think a third important thing that helped me a lot, which I didn't know at the beginning, I had to learn it the hard way, was to ask for help. Especially at the beginning, I really wanted to prove myself. Uh, for myself and for the people in front of me, I wanted to demonstrate, ah, no, I am capable of doing that. I can do that. I own this. I, you know, uh, but it's not the right way because either you don't achieve what you want, which brings you to frustration, um, or you don't give the right impression, or in any case, there's no need. You know, there's, there's really no need. And uh, um, I think that really asking help is a super important uh, thing to, to learn since the, the beginning. Yeah, I think that does a wonderful job kind of capturing the other points that you raised too. By asking for help, you're not only being authentic to yourself, but you're also helping to build trust and relationships because by asking for help and working and learning from others, I think that you build a special dynamic and understanding that really helps strengthen those relationships and Absolutely. propel everything forward in a sense. So that was a great- Absolutely. And then at the end, the work should be fun, right? Yeah. So uh, you have also to have these, uh, to build this relationship and having fun with, uh, with other people and then create this atmosphere is a safe atmosphere where everybody feels free to, to uh, throw their own ideas in and share. And uh, again, I really think that from, from brainstorming and, and sharing uh, the best ideas then will, will come up. Mm -hmm. I do have um, a bit of a personal question. I'm curious mm -hmm. from um, some of the advice you just shared. You've spoken a lot about teamwork and learning from others with your team, but I was wondering what role mentorship has played um, in your personal or professional development, if any. Um, you know, I typically don't think, so first of all, I never had an official mentor, mm -hmm. uh, but I like to think that I had many. Because uh, along my, my career, I really met people who took the time to um, explain to me um, uh, how to look at things or, you know, uh, how I was um, behaving in certain situations. Um, and I really appreciate that because at the end of the day, um, maybe a, a mentor is, is um, everybody who really takes the time to uh, give you feedback. Every time that you receive a feedback is a, some sort of, of, of mentorship and can give you the motivation then to, to look um, a little bit deeper, you know, in what they said, ah, okay, this person told me that I reacted like this or I did that. Um, or, you know, they explain mechanism that at the beginning uh, um, were not completely uh, clear, you know. Um, and when I, when I, when I referred uh, previously to uh, asking for help, 
this is actually something that I learned because my first boss told me, hey, Chinse, you're running around and shooting uh, um, uh, your, your ideas and your things here and there, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's not on you. Don't take everything on you, you know? Um, so it was, uh, it was very, very helpful. That's amazing. And I really liked your point about how you might not have had an official mentor, but you learned a lot from many people along the way, because I think that's um, a very important learning for three young girls to realize is that you don't need an official mentor always. You just need to be open-minded, interact with lots of people and learn from everyone as you go. So I think that um, kind of seeing how that's shaped your career a bit and your outlook, I think that will be super valuable to both myself and anyone else who listens and watches this recording. So Absolutely. thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> I guess um, kind of on the focus again of young girls and looking forward to their careers in technology, there's a lot of um, emerging technologies and opportunities in the sustainability space specifically. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if there was any one trend, technology, or um, idea in general that you think girls who are interested in a career path like yours or the sustainability space, something that they should keep their eye on as we move forward. Mm -hmm. So, Mm, one of the principles of sustainability is uh, to use less, right? Um, because uh, you ha we have to reduce. If we cannot reduce, we have to uh, reuse. And if we cannot reuse, we have to recycle. Um, but it's much better. And the 100% the, the sustainability thing is uh, reduce reduce, reduce. But if we have to reduce, it means that we have to sell less products, which is not sustainable because one, a third pillar of sustainability. So we mentioned at the beginning environment and society, but there is a, a third pillar that is the economic pillar. So we have to also ensure um, uh, the, the uh, um, let's say the economic uh, part of the business. So one, tr one trend that I see in sustainability is moving from products to services. And one of the, uh, if I think about services, what I think um, it's both software and services, uh, one trend is digitalization. So really, you know, uh, be able to create these um, product passports or product digital token to um, share uh, product data throughout the, the supply chain and the entire life of the product itself um, so that uh, at the end of the lifetime, uh, those products can be assessed. You can look at information, for example, and then reuse them um, for another application. Um, or at the same time is uh, um, digitalization in terms of monitoring. So you, you, what you want is to, to look that um, uh, everything works properly and just replace products uh, when it's the right time. Uh, so not like this, you know, sometimes we study this preventive maintenance. Yes, um, uh, it's, it's a, it, it, it was a good principle. I think that if we uh, make kind of step ahead in, in the technology, we can avoid to replace uh, preventively products and, 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 uh, and replace them in, uh, just in time, for example. So services, I think digitalization is, is a trend. Um, if we talk about products, is a lot of uh, um, transparency through supply chain. Uh, it's a lot of life cycle analysis, so really data analysis um, that I see, um, as well as circularity, and we mentioned about this. Um, so how to, to, to make 
um, circular products and how to think about uh, circular business models, for example. And, uh, and again, it's connected a little bit to, to the to digitalization that is uh, circularity means reusing, means you know, being able to, uh, um, to know all the inside out of, of the product that you have um, to be able to give it a, a second life. Um, having said that, uh, I also think that we have to make a um, huge step ahead and that the, the impact jobs that we will uh, see in five years don't exist yet, honestly. So it's, uh, it's an evolving world. Uh, it, we are discovering every day new things. So I would say that if you are interested in, uh, in, in having a career in sustainability, you have just uh, to to pick up what you're passionate for, what you what you like, and maybe you can write your own job description and and make the the um, the best uh, job out of it. Because at, at the end of the day, I think that one of the most important things uh, in uh, for having success is being passionate about what you what you do, right? So I really think there are a lot of opportunities out there that uh, we are not, uh, um, that we don't know yet. That's amazing. What are your plans, Anna? Do you want to, uh, <laughs> to, to, uh, to start a career in sustainability or um, where is, what is your next steps? Where, where is your, your project going? Who knows, maybe the next five years, it doesn't exist right now. It'll have to be somewhere totally out, <laughs> totally out. But um, in the short term, I'm planning on starting at Oracle NetSuite as a functional consultant in their, with their ERP software, helping customers implement that into their business. But I think um, at a more, a more broad level, what I really hope to do in the future kind of with technology is take this opportunity with a new company out of school to just explore all the opportunities and all the roles that are available. I think that when you're in a situation like the one I'm in now, there are so many people that you can look up to and learn from so many routes that are available to you as you're building your foundational knowledge that I really want to take this opportunity to speak with people who are working in sustainability and tech, maybe speak with those who come from different backgrounds with more engineering backgrounds or um, experience in computer science and kind of learn from them and their expertise there, focus on merging my business acumen with technical skills are all areas that I really just want to explore and build and something that excites me most about technology is the fact it's always changing like what you said in sustainability we might not have all the answers so I think that just by continuously learning and speaking with others like yourself and what they do and what they see the future looking like that's really want to what I want to commit myself to um, not only over the next few years, but I think over my, my whole career, hopefully, um, so I can really understand what, what is my passion, what I want to do, and where I can see myself having the biggest impact. In the I think it's a great space. plan, Anna. I really think it's a great <laughs> Thank plan. You. Yes, Thank you. Yes, and I think that, you know, looking back, um, I think that probably I should have done this and I didn't take the time to do that. And maybe one, one of the message is also take your time and don't rush in a, in a career uh, because going forward, it's, um, it becomes more and more difficult to change. You know, once you are, um, once you are in a certain path, of course you can, uh, actually everything is, is, is possible. Um, but uh, there are uh, uh, um, biggest, uh, you know, uh, biggest risks, uh, biggest uh, stakes. So 
I think it's really important if you have the possibility to do it uh, um, in the very beginning, take your time to explore different options and um, you know, really understand what's, where your passion uh, is, is leading you. It's, it's a very nice message that, uh, that we can give to everybody that is listening to the interview. Yeah. What Amazing. would be another me message, Anna, that uh, you would give to um, people in uh, companies um, or academic organization like, like myself? What would be a message that you would uh, um, give to, to those companies? One message I would give, and again, it's only from my small experience, is as much as I guess new hires are taking a risk with the company, take a risk and stay open-minded to the disciplinary backgrounds of people who are looking to get involved in your field. Like I said, I come from a business background and that's not a very common entry to tech. A lot of it comes from the more technical skilled roles and degrees, but I think it really boils down to the passion piece. Mm -hmm. I think that companies should really look for the individuals, of course, with the skills, but mostly who have the passion and want to make a difference for the people that they're working with and for. And so I think that if we can find a way to help young students and individuals explore their passion and then create opportunities from multidisciplinary backgrounds to these roles, regardless of maybe what degree they're pursuing or what background they come from, what experiences they have, to really focus on helping build new experiences and open doors for individuals looking to get involved and having open minds on both ends from the company and the academic or youth perspective, I think that will just facilitate a fantastic environment, pardon me, for learning and um, facilitating and helping these passions develop into something more tangible that can create immense returns for the environment, companies, for personal growth. And that's something that excites me a lot to think about. And I see companies really working at um, improving and um, capitalizing on. So that would be a, that would be another, I guess, piece of advice I'd have for the other end of the spectrum as well. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep it in mind for the next <laughs> hire in my team. <laughs> and thank you so much for everything that you um, shared with us today. I know I learned a lot and I think it'd be a great place to wrap up our session today for talking tech, women, and girls in ICT. Um, so thank you so much again. I really enjoyed our chat and thanks so much to all the viewers for watching. I hope that you've got something out of this session, something valuable, the viewers have found something valuable because I know that I've definitely learned a lot today and had a fantastic time. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>